Hey gang, now that one tank is emptied and the other is refilled, let's continue with part two. Well, Go just ahead. that honestly, you know, I just think that the attraction for the man is simply because people are entertained by whatever it is he says and does. I mean, it can't be anything else except they're bored by so Biden back on TV. and entertained by Trump. Pardon me? So put him back on TV. What was it? Yeah. If he's yeah. so entertaining, put him back on TV. Well, but maybe we he, should start that campaign. <laughs> the whole, there are no more people coming over the borders now than there were during his administration. Sorry, that's mm -hmm. just not true. Mm -hmm. And many of those who are are coming in through airplane not over some wall that he wants to have built in his honor let's call it what it is the great the american version of the great wall of china china yeah 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 Yep, yep, yep. And his fell over. <laughs> Mr. I can build anything fell over. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I don't know if we want to get too more deeply into politics necessarily, but um, I just hope that since we are a year away, that we will have more people wake up or more people realize or more people get bored with all the negativity, all the demoralization of people and situations because it's it's just depressing to me. So anyway. I think David Beckmark's yeah, but... approach Go ahead. What he taught us. Um I think that's gonna be pretty solid of a strategy. Hillary Clinton was right. In, well, Hillary Clinton was right in saying that this is a cult and people, cult members need to be debriefed or de, you know, de inflated of this bullshit. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that wasn't the most tactful way to describe how we can, as David would say, welcome these people back into a standard community. And that gets with um, why people belittle other people. It's the same reason why people continue to follow someone like Donald Trump. And that is ego and shame. Mm -hmm. The few, He's got fewer fans than before. Stop listening to the media. I do not believe God, he's right. that far ahead, if ahead at all. And I think the people, the, the two types of people, I always thought there was just one. And that was the mentally incapable people who cannot relate to anybody else. Which, by the way, this guy you know claims to be a billionaire, which you're not. Everything he has is in gold, which you don't. He eats very unhealthy steaks that you can't afford. Tell me again how he's so relatable. Mm -hmm. But David's right in that not only are the, the, the mentally slower and socially slower people the ones that are left, but it's also, I think, the really bigger intellectuals, like my brothers, two guys that have a pretty decent education, who have just talked themselves into why he's the cat's meow, and are now so deep, they can't use common sense and readily available facts to get themselves out. The the, never the amazing general that he had, 
What's that? Sorry. And never will be able to get themselves out of that mindset. In your opinion, your brothers, do you think they'll ever get it? I think. I don't know. It's hard. I mean, th- what little bit we talked about politics as a family, you know, because I was given on multiple occasions throughout the visit strict instructions from uh, mom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My brother Randy thinks that Tony Fauci, Dr. Fauci, invented the COVID virus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned this. And I heard that bullshit before. Yeah, we did. And I heard that bullshit before. So when when I Googled it, didn't find anything on it to like the bottom of the first or maybe beginning of the second page of replies, of, of responses, results rather. The one that I found came from, of course, Fox News. Fox News. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, now I got to pull this. Fox really isn't all that great. And of course, it's what they're going to say. Nobody else is saying it. Fox News reported that it wasn't true. Mm-hmm. That's what the article they're was. They're the ones. And they're the ones that debunked mm-hmm. it. And when I showed him that, he just went, meh. These people do not want to change their opinion. Of Donald Trump. And again, if we why? Him, why? What is it he gives the them except biggest, entertainment? I, I think the biggest thing is this so called lead that he's got over other Republican candidates is a level of domination they will never see in their own lives. Power, in other words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and they're just so hoodwinked. I mean, this is a cult, and this is a, and, and as every cult is, it's a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I have in a day, I'm going to dig up a TikTok video for everybody quick, if I can find it quickly. Eh, sorry, hold on. Um, that's Lance Bass checking in with purple hair. <laughs> Early Saturday night, maybe Sunday night, I'm not sure which one. I stood out on my seawall by my American flag. Still properly lit. It was at night. Still properly lit. I think it was Sunday because everything pretty much came and went by that point, I think. But we had a bad storm this past weekend come through Florida. Mm -hmm. And I had a video where I'm standing there with the flag in the background. And I said, we just had a bad storm, yada, yada, yada. You can find, uh, for those of you on TikTok, go to at Yerger Group, one word. That's my profile, and you'll be able to see it there. It's right now the second video. On the top row. This flag made it through this past weekend storm. And then I, you know, angled up my camera phone so that you can see the house across the canal from me. And I said, the Trump 2024 flag across the canal, not so much. And then I, I think the hashtags were. Uh, never surrender question mark because he said he would never surrender Mm -hmm. yet there he is with his now famous mug shot Mm -hmm. and uh, the other hashtag I used was dump Trump but that has oh the whole reason I looked that up that just grew while we were on today that now has almost 2200 views in a couple days no kidding. Good for you. Which for some TikTok videos is people, some TikTokers get that in an hour. Right. I'm not one of those TikTokers with 59 yeah. followers. 
And granted, some of the comments are pro-Trump, as I would expect. But with those hashtags, it's very pro-Biden, pro-anti-Trump. Oh, sorry. Pro-Biden, pro-anti-Trump, pro-somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I just think it's other, a level of yeah. shame. These people don't want to admit it. They've been tricked by a professional fraudster. And then as I take that. and then as I take a really broad look at what's happening in our world today with the destruction of entire countries yeah the you know the the killing by thousands of people with no regard for who they are i mean surely we have got to take a look at humanity and ask what the devil what is what what and so yeah. my, I, I saw a podcast recommended by a good friend of mine in the past week interviewing some women who um, who studied, they are psychotherapists of different kinds, but who were working with autistic children and children with Asperger's. And granted, it is my opinion that we're all somewhere on the autistic, uh, the autism spectrum you right. know some of us not so much and some of us right. really thoroughly in there but a lot but we're all on the spectrum somewhere anyway these two women were were talking about and it's pretty revolutionary but it's worth it's worth considering for a little bit but they were talking about their belief that while we look at autism as as something wrong with somebody that needs to be fixed, that is some kind of disability and 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 an error in the way the brain works, what they are suggesting is perhaps that people who are on the autism spectrum, way on the autism spectrum, are the next evolution of human beings. That because human beings are so what do you say as you talked about a little bit are so involved in their ego self, sense of self yeah. in their ego in power and in offending others or being offended that our emotions run so much of our lives rather than our common sense as you kind of indicated people are lacking these days that words even in our language complicate things because we interpret them differently. We use them in one way and somebody else uses them in another. And there's all this kind of misunderstanding and this all this kind of misuse of language in order to uh, alienate other people, in order to offend other people, in order to gain power over people, manipulate people like the gigantic fraudster you referred to. Yeah. That perhaps people on the autism spectrum, because they have the the ability or the disability to utilize words to manipulate people, and they have the ability or the disability, depending on how you look at them, but in this case, ability to divorce themselves of emotions, of the emotional context of a situation, they are able to look at a thing that they hear, feel, smell, taste as it is, rather than adding all kinds of context to it and, and, as instead of adding all kinds of emotional things to it, that perhaps it's the next evolution of human beings, much like, as we talked about in a previous episode, we might be able to do, or AI, artificial intelligence, might be able to do, maybe, as you said, you know, that AI is the next, what, person of the year? Yeah, yeah. Taylor Swift is this year's person of the year. Maybe AI 
is the next one. And how close are people who are truly autistic like artificial intelligence? They are able, you know, like the son of one of our artists came into the studio. And this just really blows my mind. But it's not explainable to me came into the studio with his mother and he is autistic and you know he just comes in and he asks everybody what date what's the date of their birthday and they he can tell you without even thinking what day of the week it is you know how do wow. you do that i know i mean what day of the week it is so I there's know a mine special because yeah. my dad was watching monday night football when i was delivered in the waiting room <laughs> there you go so, so that you know. that question easy. Yeah. But I mean, they have the, the idiot savants. Yeah. No. You know, how does that happen that a kid of two or three years old can play the piano? You know, where do they, where does that ability come from? And then, you know, it reminds me of another episode or, or other discussions that you and I had on another episode um, about, um, in Search of Ancient Astronauts was a program I watched back in the 70s that blew my mind, that right. talked about, you know, aliens from another world come to create the pyramids, that come to create the sacred places in Peru, that come to, that come to um, a place or, or fashion the statues on Easter Island or, you know, that kind of thing. I honestly, you know, and I don't say this to too many people, except I am now on our program. I mean, I am convinced that, you know, the aliens from somewhere else in the universe, you know, dropped in on us for a time, created some stuff, did some stuff, perhaps impregnated different people whose genetic line was forever changed. And, um, that's an explanation using lasers and powerful equipment or technology that they had at their fingertips that certainly the people who lived at the time of the pyramids were fashioned could not have done. Right. Anyway, there have been some amazing Facebook posts that I've entertained over the past week showing actual places in the world where these things exist and could not ever have been fashioned by human beings at that time, given the skills and knowledge that we have. You know, I'm a, I'm a believer. <laughs> and you know what? I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. You're going to be labeled as crazy. Oh, yes. I am. By so many of the people that are non-believers, mm -hmm. yet some of those same people who don't believe in ghosts... Mm -hmm. but they worship one. Yes. Tell me how that makes sense. They don't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. Yep. 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 And, and, and other scientific things that they deny, yet they believe in a talking snake mm -hmm. when there are only two people in the world. Mm -hmm. Yep. Explain makes that. No. Yeah, makes and no I'm, sense. And I'm at all. a person of faith. Don't get me wrong, but having read the Bible cover to cover mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. suffered through words that I can't, could not pronounce then, cannot even remember now. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty obvious if you look, read it from that objective viewpoint, that many of the stories in the Bible are history, but many of them are fables. Mm -hmm. To teach us a lesson. Mythology. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Right. Right. But to count it as objective truth is something else again. Yeah. And I, too, am a person of faith, but I'm not sure. It's above my pay grade to know exactly anything <laughs> pretty much beyond my five senses. So anything's possible as, as far as I'm concerned, but I certainly, I certainly put a lot of 
quote unquote faith or belief in the fact that we have we we're not alone in the universe. Right. We just can't be. Yeah, that, that makes me crazy. Yeah. I don't believe in little green men. All right. Well, how about gray ones? Because there's <laughs> photos of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of them. So anyway, some things to think about. And I'm excited at uh, the possibility that one of the programs on your station will will be involved with, uh, shall we say, energy, spiritual energy that is often come to us as a result of what? Tarot cards? Yeah. As a result of astrology that people, you know, people don't have a lot of faith in. And I can understand that. But, you know, it, it, it amazes me many days as I read my horoscope. And my horoscope is not created for me individually. But so many times what is said to be happening on those particular days sort of shows oh, yeah. up. It, I mean, I'm sorry. It just does. I'm not yep. here to promote it. I'm just saying what my experience is. So it's amazing. And, and I know and, a lot of naysayers will say, well, it's just in general terms and, and you're yeah, projecting something from your life that matches that because you want it to match. I'm like, well, why am I so easily thinking about something mm -hmm. so many times when I read this shit? Mm -hmm. And that, to me, it's not, I'm, lo I'm not looking for it. I'm not right. looking for it. Oh, and these women also, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Indigo Child. The Indigo. These are Indigo. The Indigo children who have an especially, uh, have a high degree of sensitivity to read people's intentions read their feelings through their body language, through their facial expression, through their body posture, and so forth. But even more, there are, and they're called indigo children, who are able to kind of read, like I say, the intentions and motivation and, and, and feelings of other people as soon as they walk in a room. Fascinating okay. stuff. Yeah. And white, they, white indigo, and this I'm is not, the color. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly okay. sure. Maybe it's a special <laughs> spectrum on the on the on the color wheel. I don't, I don't know. I should know that, but I don't. I just know that back in the day, um, my children uh, went to have readings by a holistic spiritual reader, Christina Leeson. Um, and she, my daughter came away from that reading and said that Christina called her an indigo child. And I didn't know what that meant at the time, but these ladies in the podcast, and I should send you the link to the podcast yeah. so you can put it in your episode notes so yeah, that we'll people can listen to the podcast itself. Yeah. I almost sent it to you, but I didn't want, I thought I'd talk about it before I sent it to you. No, so, that's fine. But I'll send it to you. Yeah. Anyway, fascinating. Some things to think about that this is not. God, this can't be the only level of existence that we are bombing each other to complete destruction, that we are hurting each other in the way that we are. I mean, isn't there something? There's got to be something more. There's got to be. We've got to learn and we're not. So there must be other ways of living. That's all. Yeah. Um <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to figure out how best to incorporate David's advice when he said about being receptive and to? empathetic to okay. just the other side really in anything but especially given that I talk about politics a lot with my other programs mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. and have that door open for when a reformed Trump partier, Trump, Trump uh, uh, partier, wants to come through it, mm -hmm. and that that was one of the things I earned learned with him early on. When he, and as we now know, 
on some level, the Russians beat Hillary. I tried to get to know some Trump supporters and I said, okay, you know, what are we going to do? Let, let's, let's work together and do this. They said, no, mm -hmm. we don't need you and we don't want you. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden said in 2020 what the nation really needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And that was that he's going to be a president for everyone. And now with the various infrastructure bill bills and revitalization projects, he specifically targeted congressional districts where Republicans mm -hmm. voted against it. For them to turn around and try to claim that they were the reason why it was put there. <laughs> For him to have to call him out on it publicly, as he did with uh, Lauren Boebert mm -hmm. and Maggie Green, <laughs> when he said, you know, thanks for your support and you're welcome. Mm -hmm. How that doesn't rally people behind him. And he wasn't my first choice back in 2020 either. But at least the Democratic Party had the foresight to listen and to see that COVID was on its way. And I know as a fact, he sat down with Pete Buttigieg and said, look, your time's going to come. Here's what's happening. And he was probably in on that briefing as well because he was still a candidate at the time. Mm -hmm. And they start getting certain briefings as the process goes through, just in case. And he probably said, you're right. I need to be kept in the game. Mm -hmm. I, need you, I need to be in your cabinet. And I need to be in a good position. Mm-hmm. At least they had the foresight to make that deal. Mm -hmm. I was all for Pete up until that point. Right. We were too. Yeah. For sure. And, and I, I still say, I've said this before on our show, I still say he's going to be, and we've had others in the past, it's just history doesn't want to admit it, he's going to be the next gay president. It'd be time. much well, more just openly gay. Right. So I'm not exactly sure of the timing here, but I'd like Leave to encourage our listeners. <laughs> I'd <laughs> like to encourage our listeners as the new year approaches to be open to possibilities, uh, be open to seeing people differently, to being open to to the pain that perhaps others are feeling who have been misrepresented, misidentified, and, and I guess in, in effect, just to be more compassionate and empathetic and kind. Yeah. That'd be a great way to start the new year and recognize perhaps that there are things, <laughs> as my friend Craig Bennett said, and uh, that he took from Hamlet, that there are more things in heaven and earth than what we know right this second to be open to possibilities of all kinds. How's that? Absolutely. Sound like a good way to start the new year? And as you're and a learning good way there. to end this one. Yep. Yeah. Do your homework. And I'm there you go. And I and will try to be better. To me, I mean you do go. your homework. You know, there have you that empathy and that openness to go learn something. Sounds good to me. And I'm Jane Stahl. And I'm Jurgs. And this is Both, Both sides, sides Now. Now. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, everybody.